ما جرى هذه الليلة فاجعة كبيرة ومجزرة حرب بشعة لا يمكن السكوت عنها أو أن نجعلها تمر دون حساب الليلة تم قصف مستشفى المعمداني في مدينة غزة من قبل إسرائيل I want to give you an announcement of the event that occurred in the hospital in Gaza. I can confirm that an analysis of the IDF operational systems indicates that a barrage of rockets was fired by terrorists in Gaza, passing in close proximity to the Al-Hali Al-Ma'di hospital in Gaza at the time it was hit. Intelligence from few sources that we have in our hands indicates that the Islamic Jihad is responsible for the failed rocket launch which hit the hospital in Gaza. I repeat, this is the responsibility of Islamic Jihad that killed innocents in the hospital in Gaza. WHO strongly condemns the attacks on uh, the attack on an Ahli Arab hospital in the north of, Gaza, of the Gaza Strip. The hospital was operational with patients, healthcare givers, and internally displaced people sheltering there. Early reports indicate hundreds of fatalities and injuries. The hospital was one of 20 in the north of the Gaza Strip, facing evacuation orders from the Israeli military. Words fail me. Tonight, hundreds of people were killed horrifically in a massive strike at Al Ali Arab Hospital in Gaza City, including patients, healthcare workers, and families that had been seeking refuge in and around the hospital. Once again, the most vulnerable. This is totally unacceptable. Hospitals are sacrosanct, and they must be protected at all costs. We don't yet know the full scale of this carnage, but what is clear is that the violence and killing must stop at once. Uh, we have seen a devastating uh, loss of innocent life since uh, the attacks on Israel by the terrorist group Hamas. But the scenes from the explosion at a Gaza City hospital are deeply distressing. And it is clear that there has been a devastating loss of life. Every innocent life matters, whether it is Israeli or Palestinian. We condemn any indiscriminate attacks and targeting of civilian infrastructure, including hospitals. And Australia joins with others in calling for international law to always be upheld. Right now it is 10 p.m. in Tel Aviv, Israel, and in Gaza. And a very disturbing news coming from Gaza that a Baptist hospital in Gaza has been bombed and 500 people, including Doctors, nurses and patients have died and it has huge consequences because President Joe Biden of America is visiting Israel tomorrow and he was also scheduled to meet the president of the Palestinian Authority, which is now very doubtful because we are getting news that the leader of the Palestinian Authority has already declined to meet Joe Biden tomorrow because of this horrific attack on the hospital in Gaza in which almost 500 people have died. Now there are various theories who has carried out this attack. Israel has denied that they have fired on this hospital and they are saying, the Israeli intelligence is saying that it is probably a misfired rocket of Hamas which has landed on this hospital and resulted in this accident in which 500 people have killed. A lot of theories going around. Some people are also claiming that probably it is Iran which has fired a missile on this hospital killing these people because they somehow wanted to disrupt this meeting uh, tomorrow which is going to happen between President Joe Biden, Netanyahu and then between Joe Biden and the Prime Minister of uh, uh, Palestinian Authority. So nothing is sure right now. It is fog of war. Nothing can be verified. But this is a big, big, huge development and has huge implications on this entire peace process and this war where it is heading to. This is Rajesh Pawar from Tel Aviv for India Today. 
So bringing in now our foreign affairs editor, Geeta Mohan, for the latest on that. Geeta, that's going to be the big highlight now. Uh, earlier, it appeared that USA could act as a mediator with Jordan uh, and with the Palestinian Authority also possibly acting as at least for a ceasefire to control so the death toll does not escalate. But after uh, the hospital explosion and the counter reactions coming on it, why has Jordan decided not to meet and why will the meeting only be limited to Israel? Well, uh, the fact that uh, Jordan is a very important stake player in this uh, entire Israel-Palestine war is because Jordan borders the West Bank and has uh, housed many a Palestinian who fled during the past conflict as well. Uh, they they are, stand very strongly with the Palestine question. Uh, they have been looking at what is happening. They also, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, Jordan is also a country that has played a very important role when it comes to ensuring uh, some sort of a, some uh, uh, de-escalation every time there is escalation in this part of the world. So what are we looking at over here? We're looking at Jordan uh, and the meeting that was to take place. Again, the other very important stakeholder, Puja, is Egypt because it borders Gaza, the only country that has an op uh, crossing with, uh, with uh, Gaza Strip apart from Israel is Egypt. So that's why the four uh, parties that were to meet uh, in, uh, in uh, Amman, Jordan, were Jord the Jordanian king himself, Egyptian president LCC, uh, the uh, uh, U.S. president, President Biden, and finally, Palestinian leadership, so uh, or, or representatives. So this meeting is not taking place because there is no de-escalation. There is going to be no... What was the meeting about? The meeting would have been to ensure that uh, there is absolute control in civilian casualty and that humanitarian aid goes through, oh. that Israel does have a right to respond. Uh, but again, discussion on proportionality. All right, Geeta uh, Mohan will be night. tracking, yes, that big uh, story for now. Remember, with Joe Biden set to arrive within the next few hours, how that pans out really with regard to now the meetings or will this turn into a bigger conflict?